Good morning, and Good morning. welcome to our Sunday service. Um, if the people up the top end there are feeling a little bit far away from everything, we've got about six chairs on this side if you want to move. Um, you're more than welcome to. We're also wonderful to have the uh, Reba, Stamela, and Khopani family joining us for Lolita's baptism this morning. And I think some of you have got small children as well. There's a pile of toys in the corner there. The kids are welcome to go and play with them. And if they make a noise, um, we won't be offended. We've had children ourselves. And some of them, although they're in their 20s, are still making a noise. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, but it's wonderful to have you join us. You should have picked up, if you're receiving communion, a small little uh, wine glass as you came in. Um, if you didn't, during the piece, you can just sneak out and collect one, and we will use it for the communion. Would you bow your heads and let us pray? Lord Jesus, you promised that where two or more gather in your name, you're with them. And we thank you, Lord, that you are always true to your word. And so, Lord, we pray that you would make your presence palpable to us today. Amen. Would you stand? And we start our liturgy and then go into our songs of worship. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
something for joy at the work of your hands. What is that? What have you seen God doing? Where have you seen God in your life or in your world? Just turn to the person next to you and say, I've seen God in where it was. Maybe you can go. In the flowers, indeed. Mm. In the spring. <coughs> Might be faster on the next one. Okay. Yes, that was, a, that was very slow. Good mm. We're now going to sing a song talking of where we see God. We tell of his might, sing of his grace. His robe is the light, and space is his canopy. And it's looking at how we see God in the world he's created. Worship the King, all glorious above, all gratefully sing His power and His love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of day, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of His might, oh, sing of His The deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its store of wonders untold, Almighty thy power hath founded of old, hath established it fast by a changeless decree. And round it hath cast like a mantle the sea. Thy bountiful curse, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hill, it descends to the plain, and We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us for failing you by what we do, and think and say, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. 
Father, forgive us. Let us return to the Lord our God and call to mind our sins. We confess together as pray. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back together as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to your truth. Strengthen us to do your will and give us the joy of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture says that God takes our sins and removes them from us. As far as the east is from the west, that far does he take them from us. We have a beautiful song, What Love Could Remember No Wrongs We Have Done, saying that God is omniscient, he knows everything, and yet he chooses to forget our sinfulness. Sit as we sing. What love could remember no wrongs we have done? Omniscient, all knowing, he counts not the sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord. darkness new every morn our sins they are many his mercy is more what patience would wait as we constantly roam what father so tender is calling us home he welcomes the weakest the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. What riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood beneath the debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. And Lord.
Lord, your mercy is more than we'd ever need. And we pray in your mercy you'd open our ears as your word is read, that we would hear your voice. Amen. We have our first reading. By Mzwandile. The first reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 7 to 21. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made, to, should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches may he strengthen you with power, through his spirit and in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts and through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness in God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. As we come to our psalm, we're going to be reading it in a call and response. And Hebrew poetry is different to English and uh, a lot of Western poetry, well, classical poetry, where you have rhymes of words and sounds. In uh, the Hebrew, it's ideas that repeat themselves. And so you'll notice as we go through that an idea will be, will be stated and it will be restated in a slightly different way. And with a call and response... That comes out quite nicely. So um, we do Psalm 18 together. Thanks, Vindiswa. Sure. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise. The cords of death entangled me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. From his temple, he heard my voice. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry, so it rose from his nostrils. 
consuming fire came from his mouth. He parted the heavens and came down. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He rescued me from, from my powerful enemy. They confronted me in the day of my disaster. He brought me out into a spacious place. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. Glory to Christ our Savior. After this, Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell upon the path, it was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing they may not see, and though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy. And when they hear it, but they have no root, they believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, 
produce a crop. This is the gospel of Christ. Christ Father God, we thank you for your word and pray that you'll open us to it this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Won't you be seated? I came across this uh, passage the, the, uh, the other day this week, and uh, which I thought was quite apposite. The world is a disintegrated chaos. There is division everywhere between nation and nation, between man and man, and within a man's inner life. And I thought, wow, that's quite a good description of the world in which we live. And it was written in about 1956 by a commentator who was describing the world in which Paul wrote his letter to the church in Ephesus. So if we think that our world is in a bad way, our world has been in equally interesting conditions for nearly 2,000 years and we still haven't got it right. And within this, and within the, the, the situations in which we, we, we meet today, as we pick up on that last line of the, of the psalm, he rescued me because he delighted in me. And as we went through that psalm, I was struck again that the psalmist is writing about something he knows, not some philosophical concept. He is describing a reality, the reality of a God who heard a cry for help, who came, who acted, who reached down, and who saved an individual who was now responding in praise to God. And I don't know about you, but I need that God today for me and for us. And what is that God giving us today? In a world of so many conflicting ideas and conflicting approaches and in some ways total selfishness. And this lets the mind ourselves of what God said about the difference between God and man. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. In other words, God is saying that no matter how good and clever and wonderful you are, you are there's nothing compared to the truth about me. Me, God. And when Jesus is referred to as the living word, God is saying something about his own words his own truth, and the reality of it all in the midst of our grappling with darkness and indecision. And that is, is, is quite a long introduction to why I want to go back into the parable of the sower, which God keeps bringing me back to again and again. And looking at it when he brought me back to it uh, within the last couple of weeks was this that we know that the the field is the world, but the field is also me. It's my world. And into that field, seeds are being sown all the time. They're being sown by God. That's what the parable says, because the Lord is the sower. And he goes and he, he sows lavishly. But the Lord reminded me that he's not the only one sowing into my field or into the world's field. Because in the parable of the wheat and the tares, he talks about an enemy who comes and he sows weeds into the field. So just as God is sowing good seed into my field, so the world is sowing weeds, seeds that shouldn't be there into my field. And my field, me, is accepting them. And the world is sowing into me 
all the time. Every morning when I wake up and I pick up my trusty iPad and I flick over to News 24 and then because of a man of the world into the BBC and then I have a look at The Guardian and then I have a look at Daily Maverick and I don't read many of the articles but I like the headlines because they tell me what's happening. And then I find that Johannesburg, uh, that Johannesburg South Africa beat the Wallaby so good. <laughs> But the world is sowing, and whether I like it or not, I'm being influenced by that world. But God said something to me this week which I'd overlooked, was that there's somebody else sowing into my field. There's God, and there's the world, and there's... Hmm? I can always trust him. Thank you so much. There's me. I'm saying into my world. And if you listen to yourself every day, you're sowing into the world. And you're sowing yourself. I want. I can't. I don't believe. I wish. And I wonder... Which seeds bear the most fruit from the three sowers? Isn't this interesting? I find it fascinating. You see, because it's reality, isn't it? And yet God is saying, but my word, your thoughts and your words and your things can't compare with mine. And yet I'm seduced by the world. I'm influenced by me. Norman Vincent Peale, that, that, that wonderful book, The Power of Positive Thinking, which of course has certain truths in it, even if you wouldn't go along with all of it, because there is a power in positive thinking. But if there is a power in positive thinking, there's a mighty power in negative thinking. And in this world in which we live today, there is a whole heap of negative thinking going on. We think negatively about taxi drivers. Did I ever tell you about the time that my daughter was going out with a young man? And uh, it was in the days when, uh, you know, people of different colours didn't go out a lot, but they were going out. And I was fine with this until she said to me one night, Words that struck me with horror. She said, Dad, you don't need to fetch us tonight. Jeremiah's uncle is bringing us home. He's got a taxi. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it, hey? And we sow these things into our lives. But what the, 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 the parable of the sower ended up saying to me this week is there is one truth. It's not the truth of the world. It's not the truth of Jerry Bailey. It's the truth of God. He is the only truth. And Jesus defined it for us. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. Me, a person, and what I proclaim. Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? And he might well. But Jesus had already answered it. I, Jesus Christ, am the truth. The truth is a living person. It is God himself. And that one truth reminded me of something I'd challenged myself with, and I hope some of you um, just two weeks ago, in looking at the one key prayer, or the one key part of the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Our Father, the first request upon which everything else hands, hangs. Our Father in heaven, that's who we're talking to, hallowed be your name. May your name be revered, be honoured, be hallowed, be respected, be obeyed by me and in the world. And not until that is happening will your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven, because it's dependent upon the name of God being recognized and honored. 
the one prayer, hallowed be your name. And that brought me then to the one focus that Paul gives us. He said, I determined to know nothing whilst I was amongst you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Thanks, Richard. Except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Lovely, isn't it? I'll only focus on Jesus Christ, who happens to be the truth. See how it comes together. One focus, Jesus Christ. Not multiple focus. What's the plural of focus? Thank you. No, nope. <laughs> I'll leave it to you. Not multiple, just one focus. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ yesterday, Jesus Christ today, Jesus Christ tomorrow. Jesus Christ who is coming to fetch you and me. It's all about Jesus Christ. One love. And that is for God. But that's also God's love for us. There is one love. And God says, love one another as I have loved you. That's the love. Love the Lord your God with every fiber of your being. That's the love. It's one love into which we enter with God. And we receive from him and we give back to him and to others that one love. And that's where our hope comes from, because God has poured his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's not my imperfect love, which is always conditional. I love you as long as you don't upset me. There is one need in our lives, just one. And again, Paul defined it for us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We talk about the air that we breathe. We talk about the beauty that we have seen. We talk about all sorts of things that please us and pleasure us. But there is only one thing, essentially, that we need in our lives. And that is Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. All my hope is founded in this one person called Jesus Christ, without whom there is nothing, there is no one, there is no future, but in whom there is Everything. Come unto me, he says, all you who are labor and who are heavy laden, and I, not only I, but I will give you rest. I will give you what you need. I will, in fact, be what you need and be the fulfillment within you of your heart's greatest desires. It's all founded in this person, Jesus Christ. And Paul begins to unpack that for us in this, this great letter to the church in Ephesus, which is called the Queen of all the Epistles. Because it's as if Paul, in writing, us, writing it, has been filled with the spirit of revelation, and it's just pouring out of him. And he says that his prayer for us, as it was for them, is that we will be strengthened by God's Spirit. And then listen to these words. In your inner being, in the depths of your spirit, where you really are the real you, where all your fears, all your hopes, all your pains, all your hurts, all your darkness, all your light comes together, into that person called me. And Paul says, it's there that I say that you will be touched, will be strengthened, will be cleansed, will be forgiven, will be, for heal, will be healed, will be set on fire again by the Spirit of God. 
the Spirit given to us by this Jesus Christ. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Dwell, live. Not come as, a, as an occasional guest, but come and live within you. And it's in the gift of the Spirit, isn't it? Who will be in you. Not a God who is out there. Not just a God who is here, but a God who is here. That's the reality that Paul is trying to get us to see, that it's Jesus Christ, it's God within me. And that I, with us, with we, together and individually, become a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives within each one of us and who is our life, not just our living, but our life. And he goes on and he says, I pray that you, Ephesus, you, Jerry, may grasp, lovely word, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, that you may grasp it intellectually and say, hey, this is true that you may grasp it because your spirit has been invaded by it, that you may grasp it because you have embraced it and brought it into your life and, says, and are saying, never ever leave me. This incredible love of Jesus Christ, which is higher and wider and longer and deeper than everything and anything I have ever conceived or experienced before. Within us, that I may grasp it. That you may know, says Paul, this love. You may know it because it's real within you. I know. I know my wife loves me. I don't know why, but I know she does. And I know my daughters love me. And my granddaughters never mentioned my great granddaughter. <laughs> well, she doesn't love me yet. She's never met me. But, but you know, you, you sort of know that they love you. And this is Paul is saying, I want you to know that Jesus loved you. And I want you to know that love in the depths of your being. Because it's real. Not just something out there. And I want says Paul, that you may be filled. Now we get back to the glass, don't we? Half empty or half full. And I think I mentioned before that with three boys and we all sat down at table for dinner, my mother would always say the same thing, don't fill your glass so full. And for her, glass was full when it was that far from the top. But if you've ever filled a glass, you can actually fill it until it's fuller than full before it begins running down. And that's full. And God, uh, Paul is saying, I want you to be full that much, in fact, to overflowing, completely full, with all the fullness of the measure of God. And I have this longing within me that one day I'll be talking to you about the love of God, and I will be so full to all the measure of the fullness of God that you'll have to go home and say to my wife, I'm sorry, but Jerry just disintegrated. Because, like a balloon that's burst, because I can't contain all that is the love of God, but desperately want to, to be full with that love. Of this God, who can do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his great power, that is at work within us. Not my power, not even my longing, but God's power who can do the impossible, which is make me believe and know and grasp and accept and rejoice in the light and the life and the love of Jesus Christ for me. I'm not so sure about you guys, but certainly for me.
And there's only one response. To accept it and to let it move you. And so Paul goes on and he says now, it's all in the same passage, rise up. Lovely words. Rise up, come, get up and get up and live it. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. That you and I are these temples of the Holy Spirit. That you and I are the children of the Lord God Almighty. Lovely. He is my Father. Jesus Christ is my Saviour. The Holy Spirit is my Comforter, my Guide, my Strength. God wants me to be one with Him, to enter His life as He has entered mine. So Paul says, rise up, Jerry, get up, live that life. Live a life worthy of the calling you receive. Don't muck about in the gutters. Don't get your hands and your life dirty with the filth of the world. Say, no, I'm a child of God. I don't do that. No longer live as the Gentiles do, and hear these words, in the futility of their thinking. And you must, if you read the papers and watch the news, say to yourself, what are they thinking? Are they thinking? What are they Demonstrating for and against. Can't they see the truth, the holiness of God? And the world has become full of I want. And if God lets us have what I want, we'll destruct. Be imitators of God. Because that's the vision he's giving. That's the example he's showing. Live a life of love. Live as children of the light. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That's our response. To respond to this love of the Lord God Almighty. And finally, one trust. And the angel said it to Mary, for nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. As you look in the war, war in Ukraine, nothing is impossible with God. When you look at the darkness in our country, nothing is impossible with God. When you look at the pain and agony in your own life, nothing is impossible with God. And so my appeal to myself and to us is this. If there's only one place in the entire world that actually believes in God, that believes that what I've been saying, which was what Paul has been saying, is true, let it be here. Let that light shine here and go out. And if even that is too much for the moment, let it be here. Just in me. But in this moment in time, let there be one person or one spiritual community who says, I believe in that God. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come here. As you came in the early days, come and live your life through us 
And may we be to the world what Mary was to the world and give birth to the reality of the Son of God into the communities around us. One truth, one prayer, one focus, one love, one need, Christ, one response, and one trust, and it's all in the one true God. Let's pray. Father, as your children, we meet here together to bring the love of your family to us all. As we are created in your image, unite us in your love and help us to extend this love to all we meet. Strengthen us and all the servants of your church to reveal your truth to the world. For all families, particularly Catherine and Zwandile, who bring their daughter Lolita to be in included into our church, grant love and joy to enable all to follow in your light. May the world and its leaders find your way to govern, treating all as equals. Love and strengthen all who are ill and suffering. Grant them peace and restore their health. Keep us, your children, in your faith as we follow your footsteps throughout this week. Amen. We're now coming to the part of the service where we say yes on behalf of Lolita, not yet old enough to say yes for herself, as we sow the seed and pray that God will bring that to fruition, that it will bear fruit in her life, um, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Um, so if we can have the, if we can find Lolita, we'll baptize her. <laughs> <laughs> And then if the godparents and parents can come forward. <laughs> Lisa, do you think you're ready to light the candle? On. Okay. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave himself to death on the cross and was raised again for the salvation of humankind. Baptism is a sacrament in which, by repentance and faith, we enter into Christ's salvation. We are united with Christ in his death. We are granted the forgiveness of sins. We are made members of his body, and we are raised with him to new life in the Spirit. Children who are too young to profess the Christian faith are baptized on the understanding that they will be brought up as Christians within the family of the church. As they grow up, they need the support of that family so that they may learn to live by trust in God. They need encouragement to be faithful in public worship and personal prayer, to come to confirmation and to continue in obedience to the commandments of God all the days of their life. Lolita, whom you have brought for baptism, depends on you for the help she needs. Parents and godparents together, will you help and encourage her by your prayers, by your example, and by your teaching? Parents and godparents, you who present this child for baptism 
must promise to bring them up to reject all that is evil. You are to answer for yourselves and for your child. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy what God has created? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you away from the love of God? Dear friends, community, let us pray for this child and we pray for her. God of all mercy, look on her. Amen. Put to death her sinful desires. Amen. Grant her the life of your spirit. Amen. Enable her to overcome the evil one. Amen. Give her every Christian virtue. Amen. Bring her with your saints to everlasting glory. Amen. Lolita, may God Almighty deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you into the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water that your servant who is washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to bring them to new birth in the family of your church and raise them with Christ to full and eternal life. For all might, majesty and authority and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. Parents and Godparents, you must now in allegiance to Christ declare before God and His church the Christian faith into which your child will be baptized and in which you will help them live and grow. You are to answer for yourself and your child. And the congregation can join in as well as we affirm that this is our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind? Do you believe and trust in His Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Parents and Godparents, will you by your own example and teaching bring up your child to live in obedience to God's laws as loyal members of his church? With God's help, I will. And now, let us baptize Lilita. You can stand on the chair. Amen. And look here, we've got some water. Yeah. And we're going to put it on your head. Lean forward. Can we move my Lean. Lean forward. Look in the water. Lilita, Peo uh, Yakumo, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I sign you with a cross, the sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life. I'll give you a. I'm not sure if you, you or your father should receive this. <laughs> By baptism into Christ, you pass from darkness into light. Shine as a light in the world. 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. <laughs> it is. Uh, and now we have a book for you. Take this book. In it is the good news of God's love. Read it, for it tells how we can share in the eternal life which God extends to all who repent and put their faith in Jesus Christ. God has received you by baptism into His church. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. We are children in the same Heavenly Father, we are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. <laughs> you give that to the mother of Hosey. Let us pray for the family. Merciful Father, we thank you for your gift of holy baptism. Grant that Lolita may worthily receive your gracious favor and grow into full maturity of Christ your Son, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for these families. Give them the spirit of wisdom and love, that their homes may reflect the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for ourselves as a community, Almighty God. We thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptized in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we're going to sing a song saying, Welcome to the family. If you want to go back to your places... Would you stand? Welcome to the family. We're glad that you have come to share your life with us. As we grow in love and may we always be to you what God would have us be. A family always there To be strong and to lean on May we learn to love each other More with each new day May words of love be on our lips In everything we say May the Spirit melt our hearts and teach us how to pray That we may be a true family Welcome to the family We're glad that you have come to share your life with us As we grow in love And may we always be to you what God would have us be, a family always there, to be strong and to lean on. And now, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And greet the people around about you with the love and peace of God. Peace be with you. <laughs> peace be with you, Margie. Right, and... Hilton. No, 
Our song of preparation for communion picks up on the idea of God giving us and talks about God using us. And the second verse is, Father, you've chosen the weak and the broken. God's not looking for people that are strong. He's looking for people that are available to be his ambassadors. Father, you have given precious gifts from heaven, equipping us to serve you as you move upon the earth. You prepared us for this hour and anointed us with power. For humble acts of righteousness, we freely volunteered to do your work. Ambassadors of reconciliation, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, praying for the increase of your kingdom, piercing the darkness with your light, not to us, but to you be all the praises, not to us, but to the glory of your grace. We will lift up a standard to this world, not for us, but for the honor of your name. Oh, Father, not for us, but for the honor of your name. For the honor of your name. are the vessels through whom you command your strength. So we offer up our lives as living sacrifices. Fill us with your spirit now and send us out to bring the harvest in. Ambassadors of reconciliation Teaching the good news of Jesus Christ, praying for the increase of your kingdom, piercing the darkness with your light, not to us, but to you be all the praises, not to us but to the glory of your grace. We will lift up the standard to this world, not for us, but for the honor of your name. Oh, Father, not for us, but for the honor of your name. For the honor of gifts of bread and wine, we have gifts of money in the box, gifts of donations to the church and other charities that you give what God has given you to make a difference in the world. We bring it all as an offering to Him.
God, our generous Father, has given us all that we have and enjoy. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to this table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take your eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said to them, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, you do this in remembrance of him. It is life is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Amen. Would you such as we pray the Lord's Prayer? So as Christ has taught us, we pray together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Every time we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <coughs> Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. God invites to his table not the strong and the good, but the weak and the struggling. He invites to his table not those that have much to offer, but those that have great need. He invites to his table sinners looking for mercy, strugglers looking for strength. He invites to his table people who would bear fruit for his kingdom. 
that draw near receive what he offers. Let him sow into your life to bear fruit for him. Receive the bread. Receive the wine. Receive the Lord. Amen. For communion, we're going to ask if you'll stand on the right-hand side of your chair. Opens up the, the, the row in front of you so that we can move through it. And we will then come and bring you the bread. And the lay ministers will come with wine and grape juice. Um, by default, they will give you wine. If you would rather have grape juice, just ask for it. Would you stand? Crucified. 
what gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ. Dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold. My shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley he will lead All the night has been won And I shall overcome Yet not I, but through Christ in me No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold. My sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. All the chains are released. I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. God, our Father, You've reminded us again of the coming and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on Him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star rises in our hearts. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Living in a complex and difficult world, we pray for our continent, for our city, 
for our world. God bless Africa. Guard our children, guide our leaders, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. A few notices. We have a quiet morning coming up on the 24th of September. The notice is in the Pew Leaflet. Do join us if you would like. Um, we have toys for kids to play on, but we're looking for a piece of carpet for them to play on down in that corner of the church. Um, so if anybody's got a piece of, sort of two, two and a half meter by two and a half meter carpet at home, if you can donate it, that will be uh, much appreciated. Um, and we're going, we've moved our tea from the courtyard. We thought since it's spring day, we'll move out into the garden. So we're having our tea on the lawn. Um, and now, please do join us for a cup of tea after this service. Would you stand for God's blessing? And also just remind you that if, before you go, if you need prayer for anything, we'll have some people up towards the stage that will be able to pray for you. So before you go for tea, go and pray. And then, go into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Fight the good fight of faith that you may finish your course with joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, and those whom you've prayed for, and those whom you struggle to love, this day and always. Amen. 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 Glory to God, who is power at work among us, can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And we go out trusting in the amazing grace of God.
So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.